Hello and welcome to the EduTalk author series hosted by Biotone, Biotone Edu Partner Program and Massage Industry Authors. The EduTalk author series is a bonus extension of EduTalk Tuesdays to further support virtual learning and connect you with industry authors who through their books and textbooks support your career success. Today's author is Ruth Werner, who began her massage career in 1984 and in 2005 was recognized by AMTA Council of Schools as Teacher of the Year. Ruth is a columnist for Massage and Bodywork Magazine and Massage New Zealand. She teaches continuing education workshops and, uh, excuse me, continuing education workshops in research and pathology all over the world. Let's listen and learn as Ruth discusses her groundbreaking textbook, A Massage Therapist's Guide to Pathology, now in its seventh printing and can be found through Books of Discovery. Hi Ruth and thank you for coming today and sharing your groundbreaking book with us. <laughs> I don't you love that marketing language? Thank you, Donnell. It's always my pleasure to spend some time with you, for sure. Okay, I'll turn this over to you, and we're looking forward to understanding the inspiration, what's inside, and how it will help one's career. Here you Great. go. Well, thanks very much. Um, people who have done workshops with me will, you know, probably be familiar with certain parts of this origin story. Um, but I, I, I like to share it because there are some really important things in it that, that are useful for people to know. So um, as you mentioned, I went to massage school. I started massage school in 1985 and I graduated, sorry, 1984. And I graduated in uh, 1985 after about four months of, yeah, it's probably six months of education um, in a state, in Washington state where there was no education requirement, although we had a pretty rigorous licensing testing procedure. Um, while I was in massage school, I uh, flunked my first test, which was about contraindications. And I don't flunk tests. So I decided I was going to really get to know that topic inside and out. Um, and I was already, even before I graduated, I was already um, tutoring people and helping people sort of get caught up on material they were having a hard time with. Um, and so, uh, as the school grew and I became a sort of fully fledged teacher at that school, all of the teachers taught all of the things, but I developed a particular sort of bee in my bonnet about learning and teaching about massage therapy in the context of people who live with diseases and conditions. And when I had to leave that school because of a, of a job move and I had two little children and you follow the health insurance when that happens. Um, my teacher and boss um, uh, gave me a little computer. He gave me a Mac Classic 2 because they were upgrading computers in the office. So he had this used one to, to give away. Um, and he said, you know, you keep telling us we don't know enough. We don't have enough information about massage therapy and contraindication. So you're going to be this at-home mom now and you're going to have all this time on your hands. And my kids were uh, like one and three, one and f something like that. And when this happened, which was kind of hilarious. Um, and he said, so why don't you just write us something we can use in the school? And this is in the days before everybody had the internet. And so using um, the AMA family medical guide and a couple of other uh, resources, including some college level AMP and pathology textbooks that were way outside my capacity to understand, um, I put together a document, took about a year, um, in which, you know, between my teacher, my, my boss's, re you know, request for here are the things I want you to discuss and some things that I added, you know, I, I put together a document with some information about these diseases and conditions and some ideas about whether massage might be appropriate and under what kinds of circumstances. And, you know, that was... I met, I met the brief, that was what I had been asked to do. 
Um, but when it was all done, I thought, gee, I wonder if there are any other massage schools in the country that might be interested in a document like this. And so I went to my boss and I said, how would you feel if I shopped this around a little bit? And he said, yeah, sure, whatever, go ahead. And I called a friend, I called Dr. Ben Benjamin, who had uh, been another one of my early influences. And I said, I have this manuscript and I'm not sure what to do with it because at that time he had four books on the market. And he said, well, that's interesting because I just got this letter from this publisher in Baltimore, which at that time was about 40 miles away from me. And he said, and they're looking, they're opening a whole new department in complementary and alternative medicine and they're looking for manuscripts. So why don't you call this lady? Um, and it was one of those moments where, you know, I remember her name, I remember a lot of details of the conversation we had, and she really guided me through submitting an author proposal. Um, and it took a long time. I think I started that process in 1993, and I opened my very first box of books uh, in October of 1998 at the AMTA National Convention, which was in Washington, D.C. that year. Um, and you know, at the time when I took on this project, this uh, publisher, which at that time was Williams and Wilkins and then became Lippincott Williams and Wilkins, um, they thought it might sell, you know, three or 4,000 copies a year and that would be worthwhile. That was sort of the rubric that they used to make a decision on whether to, to move forward with that project. And what they discovered, because this was one of the very first books created specifically for massage therapists by um, a sort of big time medical publisher. Uh, and what they discovered uh, is that massage therapists were absolutely starving for good books written for us because we hadn't had that. You know, when I went to massage school, when I went to massage school, um, we had a book that was sort of a, a junior college, community college level uh, A and P, the, the, what was it, Human Body and Health and Disease. And we had um, a, an illustrated uh, anatomy book, the Clementi, and we had a musculoskeletal anatomy book that was written for physical therapists and the Travel. And none of those books were written or created for us. So to have a, to have a textbook hit the market that was just for massage therapists. And it, and it also, and this was good luck more than good planning, but it hit the market the, at the same time that the National Certifying Certification Board for Therapeutic Massage and Body Work said, well, all right, if you want to be a school that lets, you know, where your students can test to get the certificate, then you have to have a, a minimum 40 hour pathology course. Um, and so schools were really scrambling to find good materials on which to build a pathology course and the sort of homegrown handouts that were created within the schools, you know, no longer really seemed adequate. So all of those forces put together, you know, that I worked really hard and I had wonderful editorial support and Williams and Wilkins made a beautiful book, the first edition of the book. And it hit the market at exactly the right time when everybody was really hungry um, for books. And it was a big success. It, it sold much, much more than um, anyone had anticipated. And consequently, I was recruited to, you know, do updates and, and create new editions. Um, and that happened on about a four to five year schedule for many years. Um, and so, you know, I frequently tell people if you are still working out of the first edition of the textbook, and I, I don't have one within hand's reach, but if you're still working out of the first edition that was published in 1998, really, it is time to put that aside and update there. We have learned some things. Um, but all the way through, you know, my book was, was, was reviewed by experts um, who knew about the diseases and conditions I was writing about. I was writing not from the perspective of someone with a medical training or medical background, but from the perspective of someone who needed to figure out what are the variables by which we make decisions. Um, but I've ha always had great editorial support in terms of making sure that what I'm sharing is valid and accurate and applicable. Um, and then several years ago, I'm trying to remember what year it was, 16 or 17, um, we got the news that uh, that uh, Lippincott Williams and Wilkins was going to drop all their massage titles. And I got picked up right away 
by Books of Discovery. And so, Donnell, you said it's in its seventh printing. It's actually not quite right. It's in its seventh edition because there are multiple printings within each edition. But my seventh edition, which is this one, came out um, two years ago next month from Books of Discovery. It is, they did a beautiful job. They gave me wonderful design and support for it. And if the question is, you know, really how does this affect your practice or how can you build a better practice? Um, you know, this is where I keep coming back to is, if you're working in a clinical setting and you're working with people who are who have health challenges or injuries or things like that, you need a pathology book anyway. Mine is not the only pathology book on the market. I think mine has a lot of strengths. Um, but even if you're not working in that kind of setting, if you're working in a spa or a franchise or at a recreational setting, you know, say at a resort or a vacation place or on a cruise ship or whatever, or in a salon, if you're working, if you're offering massage therapy in, in what we might consider to be a recreational setting for people who are looking for pampering and stress relief, um, you still need a pathology book because people with diabetes go to the spa and people who have cancer go on vacation and people with complex health challenges go to the hair salon. And, um, you know, so we are not at a place in our profession right now where our clients are going to choose this kind of massage therapist for this kind of massage and that kind of massage therapist for that kind of a massage. We're at a place where all massage therapists need to be prepared at least to say, oh, your health situation is complex enough that I don't feel qualified to help you. Let me give you a referral, right? Um, and that sort of thing doesn't happen very often, but when it happens, it can save people's lives. Uh, and that's why a pathology book is a really important part of your library. Um, I think my pathology book is particularly good, mainly because my emphasis is not on this indicates massage, this contraindicates massage, but it's more on how do you think through the process? So in the discussion of each condition, it concludes with a look at what are the risks? What, what are some bad things that might happen if a massage therapist is not well-educated and not being careful? What are the benefits? What are the great things that could happen if a massage therapist is skilled and educated and ready to make the right decisions? And then accommodations, which is how can we manage those risks, eliminate those risks, maximize those benefits? In other words, what are we going to do to alter our massage or our massage setting? or the way we go about creating relationship with this person in order to get the best outcomes. Because, you know, those answers are going to look different for every individual. No two people do the same kind of massage and no single person does the same massage every single day, at least not if they're going to last in this profession, because we need to mix it up and learn new things and expand our skills. But every day, what we do need to do is weigh risks and benefits for our clients who live with health issues that are gonna have an impact on the choices that we make. So that's my little pitch about um, how I got here. Oh, one last thing before I uh, take any questions, Danielle, is um, one of the reasons I think it's really important for people to know my origin story is, is to make this, is to emphasize this point, which is that I am, I was a massage therapist. I'm no longer licensed, I'm not in practice. I didn't like it that much. I was always much happier in the classroom or doing writing or things like that. Um, but that is my credential in this field. I have been a massage therapist. I have never gone to medical school. I'm not a doctor or a naturopath or a nurse or a physical therapist or an occupational therapist or any other kind of manual therapist. I'm a massage therapist who was willing to read and interpret a lot of really, really hard technical, boring information in order to put that in a construct that makes sense to other massage therapists. That's what I do. I'm an interpreter, if you like. And the reason I think it's really important for people to know that is that if I can do this, you can do this. It can be challenging, but there will never be a book that covers all the diseases I got a, I had a Facebook message this morning from someone 
who has a client who uh, a client who has a blood clotting disorder with some name that I had never heard of. And she wanted, you know, wanted my input on safety and, you know, uh, I will look it up. Sure. But I will also give her guidance for how to look this up because there will never be a single resource that covers all the things it becomes our job. It's in our job description in terms of practicing safely to be able to look up this material and derive from it informed choices for our clinical decisions. And that's a big, uh, that, that is a, a way of thinking that I work hard to model in the writing of the book and also in the ways that I teach. Again, if I can do this, you can do this. This is something that is within the capacity of every massage therapist. It's not the funnest job, but the time is going to come when it will become part of your job because your client will come in and they really want to receive your work and you're pretty sure you have good things to offer them, but you want to be sure you're safe. You got to be able to look stuff up and make your own decisions. All right, Donnell, any questions on all of that? Well, very interesting. And, and I am not a massage therapist either. Um, and the more I learn, I, I mean, what a wealth of knowledge and, um, to be, a, and you're so true. It's so true that no two clients are the same with the same issues. And I, I can't imagine a therapist doing the same type of massage every single day. Um, it doesn't work that way. And to have a reference book that is handy, that they can reach um, or they might have seen something with the client the last time they met, and now the client's coming back tomorrow so they can spend time under, further understanding mm -hmm. um, through your book in how to take this tomorrow's massage to the next level. Mm -hmm. So um, it's wonderful to have this information, and I, I'm sure that many schools have this book mm -hmm. and so our listeners are familiar with it. Otherwise, if they are interested um, in purchasing a copy, how do they go about that, Ruth? Good. So the, the, the sort of cut to the chase version of that is to go to Books of Discovery at booksofdiscovery.com. Um, but you can really, I mean, you can get it through Amazon. You can get it through, you can order it through your local bookseller, I'm sure. <laughs> um, the other thing I'd like, if, if it's okay, Donnell, can I do a tiny bit of self-promotion? Do a tiny bit. Yes. Okay. No, I, I wanted to ask you, like, All right, you go good. TA, where are you going to be? What do we need to know? How do Thanks. people reach you? So yes. Yes. Well, all right. Do. So thank you. My website is, uh, it's really hard to remember. It's ruthwerner.com. And there you, there will be a link to buy the book if you don't already own it uh, or to buy an updated edition if you own an older one, it's, it's probably time. Um, but also at my website, I have a page dedicated to everything that I have created and written around COVID-19. So if you wanna get up to speed on that, that's there. Um, there are pages on my live and uh, um, distance learning classes. If you are someone who books classes for massage therapists, um, you can find me there. Um, but the, the thing I would really love, <coughs> but the thing I would really love to um, encourage our listeners today to think about is if you have a good, I have a client who story. Uh, because I have a podcast. So I have a podcast comes out every Friday through ABMP. So you can get that at abmp.com slash podcasts. That's where you can sign up for it. And the name of the podcast is I have a client who, and it's just, it's, it's typically 10 to 15 minutes long where someone sends me just a brief story. Like this woman I was describing whose client has a blood clotting disorder. She's not hundred percent sure what to do with it. I will take that, I will look into it, I'll unpack it a little bit, and I will share my suggestions or any insights that I can gather. Um, and it's, you know, it's 15 minutes long at the most. Um, you don't have to be on it. I don't have to interview you. All I need is just a little bit of information. Um, because if you're having this kind of question, the chances are good other massage therapists are having it too. And 
it's really fun. It's because it's only a few, you know, a, a few minutes long. It's the kind of thing you can do while you're folding laundry or taking a walk or whatever. Um, but I would love to have your, I have a client who stories and you can reach me through my website or you can find me on Facebook, Ruth Werner's pathology page. Um, and that would be great. Well, wonderful. Great information. Um, love what you're doing and you're out and about at trade shows again and traveling or. Um, not yeah, not a lot yet. I will not be able to go to Tampa for AMTA this year. Um, I am actually appearing at the Alliance for Massage Therapy Education virtual meeting, which starts on Friday. In fact, I'm delivering the keynote speech at 8.30 Friday morning. Wonderful. Um, yeah. And, uh, but beyond that, I don't have a lot of in-person travel scheduled yet. You know, this has been a big year for uh, webinars and distance learning, which is generally speaking, a pretty good fit for the things that I teach. So uh, I would love to come and visit you in person. But in the meantime, if you'd like to set up a webinar with me, I'd be happy to talk about that. Wonderful. And um, hold up the book one last time. And, and then I'll give you my thank yous and goodbye. And Books of Discovery or RuthWerner.com. Yep, Thank you absolutely. so much. Thank you, Danielle. It's been a pleasure. I agree.